Once again, it is time for another Popcross Community Redraw episode, and a new multiverse tale. For some reason, I decided that the theme of this month was going to be people submitting their own original alien characters and me turning them into dinosaurs. I don't remember how I came up with that. It seems like such a weird and random pairing, but oh well, it's what I picked and lots of people submitted some really cool aliens, so I had a lot of stuff to work with. As promised, and is the case with my more recent dinosaur episodes, the narrator of this episode will be good old Champagne McGregor, the cheeriest narrator to ever come across Popcross Studios. Forgot to emphasize the sarcasm there, but that's all right. People aren't here for the intro, so let's just get on with it and get into the story and art, shall we? Let's go. Hit like if you want. Subscribe if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. I really can't believe you're making me do this now. I mean, after the day I've had? Seriously? Fine. Fine. Let's get this over with then. You need me to do a flippin' star date or something stupid thing like that? Dr. McGregor's log day whatever today is? Nah? Well, then let's just get into it, shall we then? Where you want me to start? I rolled out of bed, remembered that I was alive and had this flippin' job, and, as usual, cursed the bleeding sun for the very indignity it did me by coming up in the morning. I got dressed and stepped out of my room to hear that the whole bleeding island of Dino Cross Park was going mental. Now, if you're wondering why I couldn't hear the alarms in my room, that's because I busted the alarms above my bed and made my room soundproof. You clowns get me 13 hours a day, 5 days a week, but when I'm in my room, none of your stuff gets to come in and bother me. Got it? Anyway, whole place is freaking out. I don't know how long it's been going on, but I figure, whatever, probably another dinosaur breakout. Big surprise, must be a Tuesday. So I waltz down the hall, not seeing anybody around, so I figure everybody's hiding out or busy wrangling whatever dinosaur escaped. I go grab a coffee at the kitchen next to herbivore Bioscape B, for one that's half grassland and half water where, you know, we're supposed to keep bleeding herbivores. Then, through the glass, I see that the bleeding Xenon Rex stands right by me, which, as you might guess from its name, ain't a bleeding herbivore. And I'm just thinking, wow, what a surprise that our blatant security hasn't found the thing that got out of its containment when I just woke up five minutes ago and I already spotted it. Really hiring some top-notch people here. Anyway, thing about that dino is, even though it's a carnivore, it doesn't really try to eat humans. Which was almost a bummer for me, the thing's like a big dog to people. So I open the doors and walk into Bioscape B and I yell up to it, Oi! Back to your own cage, you stupid mug. Try to remember it's early, so I'm not thinking totally straight. The thing looked down at me for a sec, then went back about his business. I was just about to turn around when I noticed something in the sky. It's one of our terror whatever dinosaurs, one of the flying ones. Now usually, the flying dinosaurs are in a bioscape that has a roof over it. You know, to keep them from flying away. Which is when I start to get the sense that this breakout might be a bit bigger than usual. But even weirder after that is when the thing turns its attention to a fancy flying jet that's coming towards it. Takes me a second to recognize, but the jet is the hyperjet of the Psy 5. You know, the third or fourth best superhero team on the planet. Now, despite the fact that our controlling shareholder of Dino Cross Park, Dr. Eunice Versai, or as she stupidly likes being called, Dr. Universe, ain't a big fan of a Psy 5, I actually think they're pretty great. I thought it was kinda cool that they showed up to help. Of course I wasn't thrilled to see that one of my dinosaurs that I'd made, that stupid flying one that got out, attacked their jet. Knocked it right out of the sky above me and two of the team actually fell out of the jet straight into the water of Bioscape B where I was trying to enjoy my cup of morning brown. That caught the Xenon Rex's attention, so it started stomping over towards the water. And I just decided to follow, cause what else did I have to do, eh? Anyway, then the- I'm sorry Champagne, but I'm going to have to interrupt you for a moment so we can take a look at the first image. The image? What are you talking about? Seriously, what are you talking about? Uh, nothing, please continue the story, Champagne. That's Dr. McGregor to you, you disrespectful mug. 
Anyway, I walked over to the water, standing next to the Xenon Rex, and I kinda just lean up against its leg. I tell ya, that thing is real friendly to people. I dunno what I did wrong with it. Anyway, I kinda just watched. Through the water I could kinda see that the two that fell in, they seemed to be fighting with that big weird hybrid dinosaur thing you lot made me make to look a bit like those weird Japanese kappa things. You know the dinosaurs that look like a mix between an ankylosaurus and a big stupid turtle? It's not a carnivore or nothing, but it is a bit territorial, hence it attacking him. There's a bit of an underwater scuffle, then the dinosaur suddenly shoots out of the water like a cannon and slams right into the Xenon Rex, knocking it over. Managed to miss me somehow, guess I'm just unlucky. Or lucky depending on your perspective I guess. Anyway, those two dinosaurs start fighting each other. The Xenon is stronger, but the turtle thing has skin like rock, so it's a pretty even fight. I watch that for a few secs until the two Psy 5 kids swam up out of the water. Turns out to be Calamity, which I kinda guessed since that bloke has the power to repel anything he touches with extreme force, hence the dino flying up out of the water, and the other was Soundstrike. The one who can absorb sound waves and use them to do crazy super punches and to heal people and whatnot. I was kinda just looking at them. Didn't know if I should introduce myself or something cause you know they're superheroes. They're busy doing their thing. I didn't wanna bug them. But then they see me so I kinda just wave at them. Soundstrike kinda just ignored me which I thought was rude and keeps watching the dinosaur fight. And look. I get it, it's a cool thing to see two dinosaurs going at it, but I felt like a superhero should be getting busy doing their superhero stuff. They was just watching the fight. Not Calamity though, he starts sign language and at Soundstrike, since Calamity can't talk, and Sound is kinda ignoring him too, and pushing him aside. That seemed a bit rude as well if you ask me, not that anyone did. Then they finally looked at Calamity, watched him sign a sec and told them to slow down, but they couldn't understand what he was saying. He tries again and they still ain't getting it. And that's when I chime in and I say, Oi, he's saying you should stop him from fighting and go find your team. See, I dated this guy back in university who was mute, I think. Again, fuzzy memory from all the times I've been hit in the head by dinosaurs that are escaping. But either way, I know BSL pretty fluently. Sorry, Mr. Gregor, I'm going to have to interrupt you again. For what? What now? Seriously? For what? Nothing, sorry, go on. Alright, anyway, I'd obviously gotten their attention. Calamity marches over, signing to me that the sci fi are here to shut down Doctor Universe once and for all, that all the breakouts are constantly risking employees' lives, and this one is the last straw, and so on and whatever. I says he's preaching to the choir. I know this place is stupid and ridiculous, it's just a living to me, even though I only get to go home on weekends and holidays, but that's more of a commute thing, not easy to get to an island every day for work. Would be nice if I could get a boat even just alone, but no, apparently the work I do isn't important enough to get one of them from the company. Anyway, Calamity says they need to get to their team, get all the employees to safety and get to Dr. Universe to arrest her or something. I says to him I don't even know if she's here today, but if she is she'll be in the central research tower and that I can take them there. But as for their team, I got no bleeding idea how to get to them, they just crashed a plane who knows where on the island. Then of course the big guy just turns on his hologram communicator thing, signs to the team leader, swipe, finds out they're all fine and they all agree to meet at the central tower. I tells him how we can lock down Bioscape B by activating the secondary blast doors to make sure these dinosaurs don't go anywhere, but Calamity asks what about these dinosaurs fighting each other, shouldn't we try to separate them and put them in their own containment. Before I can says anything, Soundstrike yells out that they don't have time for that and that they ain't here to protect dinosaurs, they're here to protect people. Frankly, I thought they didn't need to protect anyone who worked here, it's their own fault for choosing to work here. But of course these two are superheroes so it's kinda what they're expected to do. But anyway, just then another dinosaur, definitely not in the right containment, leaps out of the water behind us and chomps right down on Calamity. Was that ridiculous looking glowing neon spinosaur you mugs made me make? 
leaps out and it's trying to chomp right through Calamity, but you know, he's got super durability and the dino ain't getting through that. So it's just stumbling forward trying to bite into the guy and ends up slamming into the Xenon Rex, who's still scrapping with the turtle thing. Then they all just start going crazy at each other, turns into a real brawl. I figured Calamity would be able to get out of it easily, but he starts trying to separate all the dinosaurs, the crazy mug. Then Soundstrike runs in and punches the leg out from under the Spinosaur with a giant sound punch thing. Then they start laying into the Xenon, honestly, it was a bit fun to watch. But definitely looked like Calamity and Soundstrike was trying to do very different things. One was trying to protect the dinosaurs, and the other was just trying to fight them. What's wrong, Champagne? Why have you stopped? Oh, I don't know. I just assumed you was going to interrupt me again by now, so I stopped. Am I right, or what? Actually... Yes, thank you very much. Now, please continue. Okay. Whatever. So this whole fight starts going insane. The Spinosaur is on the ground, and Soundstrike is about to blast it in the head. But then, Calamity gives it a tap that sends it flying across the grass into another dinosaur that was just off in the distance minding its own business. Was one of them duck-billed herbivore things or something that we made all green and alien looking or whatever. So the Spinosaur starts trying to eat that thing, which is running away from it while Soundstrike is trying to kill all these dinos and Calamity is just trying to stop them from fighting. I was just there finishing my coffee because really, what was I going to do to help? Anyway, Calamity is clearly real miffed at sound but can't say anything seeing as how his hands were all tied up trying to keep the Xenon from eating the turtle thing and suddenly he blasts the turtle thing right towards the water and just by happenstance, right towards me. This thing is definitely about to slam into me like a truck and flatten me, so I just said, well, this is one heck of a way to go out. But then Calamity smacks Soundstrike and they rocket towards me right under the thing and tackle me out of the way, knocking both of us into the water with the turtle thing flying on past overhead. Needless to say, I spilt my coffee, so my day just kept getting better and better. We both get out of the water, and Soundstrike starts flipping out at Calamity for blasting him without asking, and Calamity starts signing that he needed to save me, and they start going at it, but Sound can't even keep up with the argument, and eventually, after trying to flip out at each other for a bit, they both look to me like, why didn't I move? I didn't really know what to say, so I just kind of stammered out what I was thinking. Just seemed like a good way to go out. That really shut them both up. They both got real sad looking after that, which I didn't expect or know what to do with. It got a bit weird. Seemed like a normal thing for me to say, honestly. Anyway, to break the awkwardness, I led him to the secondary blast shields button, pushed it, put up the blast shields, and the dinosaurs in Bioscape B were all locked up again. Of course, that duck build one was still running away from the Spinosaur, and Calamity wasn't too happy about it, but they had more important things to worry about. So we moved on. We went back in the hallway and headed towards the central tower. On the run there is when things started to get a little bit painful. Not just because Calamity started asking some personal questions he had no business asking, but also because we ran into a certain type of raptor that these two weren't properly ready to fight. So Calamity started asking me why I was so willing to help them topple my boss. And I of course said the higher ups of this place are about as smart as the dumbest dinosaur here and they deserve to have this place crumble. Then he asked me why I worked here in the first place if I hated it so much. I said it was just a decent living and my dream job had always been to give people superpowers and study superpowered epigenetics. But since that was made illegal about 20 years ago, I just took what I could get as a geneticist. Finally, he asked me if making a living with something I hated this much was really worth it if it meant I was so tired of it that I'd let myself get killed by being smushed by a flying dinosaur. I tell ya, that caught me off guard a bit. I didn't really know what to say. I, I guess being unhappy with things, it just started feeling 
normal. So I just stuck with things that I hated, because it was, I don't know, comfortable, I guess. Of course, I didn't actually say any of that. Soundstrike interrupted asking what Calamity said, because they couldn't follow. I jumped all over them right then and there, and said how do you not know sign language proper when you're on a team with someone who can only communicate through sign language. Of course looking back, that was just me deflecting. Wasn't my most mature moment frankly, I, I see that now. I, I think I apologised later, I, I don't remember. Anyway, about 50 metres away from the elevator for the central tower, we comes across a hallway where the lights are dead and there's no windows. Wasn't bright enough to see anything, but we could certainly hear. And there was something down that hallway that we didn't want to come up against. Could tell by the sound that it was that nocturnal raptor that stupid horror up got me to make. The one where they wanted it to have tentacles coming out of its back. I told them I tried and it didn't come out right that the tentacles became spikes. But really, I just bred the thing to have spikes instead cause what was I gonna do? Was I really supposed to try and give a dinosaur tentacles on its back? I'm a geneticist not a god. Anyway, we start creeping our way down into the dark cause the elevator is at the end of the hall. But we can't see where the thing is, we can just hear it. Calamity stands out in front because he's got the durable skin, but suddenly his leg gets swept from under him and this dark blur of fur leaps out, knocks me over and pins me to the ground. And to my own great surprise, I was actually scared. That hasn't happened to me in a life threatening situation in a while, and I go through a lot of life threatening situations because I work at this stupid place. So that whole situation got me a bit existential thinking. But of course it wasn't the time for that, because a dinosaur's mouth was an inch away from my face. Luckily it got blasted by sound that nearly burst my eardrums and smacked the raptor off of me. Unfortunately it then disappeared into the dark again. Soundstrike pulled me up and yelled something but I couldn't hear nothing but ringing. So they just pushed me in the direction of the elevator and I ran, assuming they was all with me. I got to the wall and felt around for the button and surprisingly I found it and it worked. The doors opened and the lights from inside it lit up the hall so I could see that Soundstrike was now pinned to the wall with the dinosaur chomping its teeth right into their shoulder. Calamity could finally see too, grabbed the thing's mouth, tore it loose and shot the thing down the hallway away from the elevator. He picked up Soundstrike and ran right next to me or hit the button and the doors closed before the dinosaur could get back to us. Sound was bleeding all over the place, Calamity was trying to put pressure on the wound, and it turned out our problems with dinosaurs still weren't over yet. So the elevator gets to the top floor, opens up with sound strike in a real bad way, and of course, we're faced with the other Psy 5 gang all getting their butts handed to them by the Rangaceratops. That big angry dino I made when the higher up said they wanted an herbivore that was meaner than a carnivore, cause they thought kids liked things that was mean. So I made this thing, which promptly killed a bunch of the other dinosaurs in the herbivore containment. I thought the higher ups had put it down to be honest, but somehow it lived and it was here in the central tower's penthouse. No idea how it got there, took the freight elevator somehow I guess, I don't know, but that wasn't the problem was it? Problem was, Zeph, the lizard tech guy of the team was on the ground unconscious, the leader, Swipe, her powers weren't doing nothing against this dino, and Jump Kick, the dumbest named one of the bunch if you ask me, couldn't do much more than dodge around the thing. Calamity clearly wanted to say something, but his hands were all tied up with the bleeding. So I just yelled out, Oi, swipe, called over the leader, and got her to take over on watching Soundstrike while they healed themselves up. So Calamity could run in and take a swing at the dino. Problem was, he smacked the thing to send it flying, and it just slid across the ground, barely a few meters. This thing was real tough. Then it charged at Calamity and smacked him across the room, nearly smashing him through a wall. Then it seemed real set on killing Calamity. This thing just completely brutal. He kept going at the dino, but it was barely doing nothing. That was when I got a little idea. 
looking over at the biggest window in the place. I ran right in front of it and yelled to him, Oi, Calamity, get yourself over here, we're gonna give this thing some flying lessons. He got the idea and ran over and stood with me in front of the window. The dino charged at us both, as fast as it could go in the space. Calamity waited till the very last second and jumped aside. I kinda assumed he'd tackle me aside too, but guess he was gonna let me make my own choice on, you know, whether or not to actually jump out of the way. And, to my own surprise even, I did. The dinosaur smashed through the glass and fell something like a hundred stories down. Don't know if it lived yet, but at least it was out of our way. The team regrouped, Soundstrike got themselves all healed up, just in time for a dino cross jet to float down outside the smashed window. Dr. Versailles was leaning out the side. She tells the sci fi from a distance that they're on private property and to vacate the premises or she's within her rights to use lethal force. I know I say that the horror ups here are clowns, but she's a next level piece of work that lady is. Anyway, Jump Kick was charging up a teleport ball thing I assumed to try and get on the jet, but Versai flew away before they could do anything. Wasn't much they could do about her then, they'd have to try and catch her another time. But what they could do is get all the other employees on the boats to get them off the island. I said my goodbyes to Calamity and Soundstrike and that was that. Now, we're all set up in these stupid tents doing these stupid assessments of what happened today. So that's the whole story. Is that good enough for you? Did I cover enough to get out of here finally? Yes, thank you Champagne. Sounds like you've had quite the day. I'm not sure how the other higher-ups will feel about you assisting the assailants of Dino Cross Park, but- Assail- Assailant? You know what? It's not gonna be a problem. I'm- I'm sorry, what do you mean, why not? Because I quit. This job ain't worth wasting and hating my life for. I finally see that now. See you never, you stupid mug. And voila, our new background for the next month. Thank you so much to all the awesome people who submitted. There were so many cool aliens to go through. It was really great seeing how different people used the prompt. And of course, extra special thank you to the people who ended up getting selected. Matthew Simon Cavage, Halky on Lioness, YT underscore Nas underscore 115, Zillef 11000, at its underscore Kumara, and Russian Batman. Massive, massive thank you to them and to everyone else again. And before I forget, I want to say that anyone that's looking to do some kind of monthly challenge in October, I know, you know, Inktober is the big one, but a bunch of other people seem to have made their own sort of spin-off monthly art challenges to do a different prompt every day on October. On Subjectively, I think they do Apocalypse-tober or Apoctober, and that's always really cool. And of course, one of our awesome mods of the Popcross Community Discord, Kurt, has made another set of prompts for Poptober this year partially inspired by a lot of the stuff that I draw regularly on this channel. So if you want a monthly art challenge for October, that's a good one to go to. I'll link the prompt list in the description. Thank you very much to Kurt for setting that up. And now of course I have to announce the theme for the next month of Popcross Community Redraws, which I think is just going to be a regular redraw, not me turning stuff into stuff, but it will still be a Multiverse Tales story, though I'm not going to reveal what the story is yet. But basically I want people to submit their own original design for a freaky mutant monster thing. I'm not really going to get more specific than that, you can do with that phrase whatever you really want. Also, as I've done a bunch of times in the last little while, I would like to request that people submit two drawings of the character in two different poses. I've said before you have to do one static pose and one difficult pose, really I just want to see two different angles of the character. They don't have to be super dramatic or dynamic if you don't want. The deadline for Freaky Mutant Monster Thing submissions is going to be Friday, October 22nd, and the redraw will probably come out a week later or a little after a week later, sometime soon after that. Super excited to see what you all submit. And as always, the links to the Discord and the email address that you can submit to are in the description of this video. But besides that, that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcross Studios, home of the Nerdy Start videos on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and submitting, everybody. And I will see you all in the next episode on Monday, which is finally going to be My Hero Academia, Let There Be Carnage. I promised it ages ago, and it's finally coming. Hopefully see you all there. Goodbye.